Hello, Alan Blaine here. I want to talk to you real quick about soy and I uh, want to talk a little bit about the dangers of soy, but also I would like to clear up some of the misinformation and misconceptions are, that are out there in an attempt to uh, add value to others' lives and hopefully further Nicole and I's mission to help end this trend of chronic disease that's plaguing our nation and, and beyond. So I hope you find some value in this the next few minutes and get something out of it that can benefit you. I want to first start by saying that, you know, we, Nicole and I, when we're out and as a family, when we're shopping in the grocery stores and in restaurants particularly, we try to avoid soy. Why? Because 90% of the world's soy, or not the world soy, U.S. grown soy, is genetically modified. Genetically modified with DNA from soy, yes, but also DNA from petunias and DNA from mice. Yes, isn't that nice? So that's why we try to avoid it. What's the consequences of this genetically modified soy over years of consumption? Who knows, and I don't want to find out. So that's why we try to avoid it. Unfortunately though, um, before I jump to the, I'd like to try to clear up some of the misconceptions and the, and the fear about the non-genetically modified soy because um, the non-genetically modified soy, the, the soy that you know has been in in humans diets for thousands of years is something that there's even fear about today. What is the fear? The fear is hormonally that it causes hormonally mediated cancers. Breast cancer in women, prostate cancer in men. And before I jump into the science and address some of those issues and concerns, some of those mis misconceptions, uh, and share with you what the world leading health authorities are saying, world leading cancer centers are saying about that, Let's begin, if we could, with just taking a kind of a common sense approach. I kind of like to look at things more from a common sense approach, and then I also like to look at them from a scientific approach. And, um, you know, some people will tell you that, again, soy will cause all these things, any kind of soy, genetically modified or otherwise. And it's really interesting because, you know, the regions of the world, particularly Asia, that consume the highest level of soy, sometimes... 10 times the amount of soy, for example, Asian women will consume on, you know, approximately 10 times the amount of soy that Western women will uh, consume, yet they have much lower incidence of several chronic diseases, in particular, the, 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 the cancers that people are concerned about, these hormonally mediated cancers like breast cancer in women. And, um, you know, some people will try to say that, you know, because soy increases your risk of... Um, of, of cancer that you should avoid it when really just a common sense look at it tells you there's something not quite right about that. In fact, I was reading a study just recently said that Japanese women have four times lower cancer rates than American women. And what's interesting is, and they consume much more soy than we do, and what's interesting is the study went on to say that these women that move to from Japan to the US or to the Western world and adopt a Western diet their cancer rates come right back up rather quickly to match and mirror those of women that, that have been here you know, all their life. Um, so anyway, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Now why is it that people believe that this myth that soy can cause hormonally mediated cancers? Well, it, it goes back several decades ago, and there's more to the story, but I'll just give you the quick rundown on it. Somebody along the way, I believe it was back in the 80s, I'm not exactly sure when, but they misdiagnosed, if, if that term is even correct, looking at the soy molecule, a part of it as being uh, a estrogen, okay? So they, they believe that it's estrogen in soy that causes these hormonally mediated cancers. The problem with that is, in that theory, and that a lot of people have bought into for many decades now is that estrogen is only made by animals and a few insects okay and plants cannot and do not make estrogen soy is a plant and but because of their molecular similarities they have the ability this is what's really interesting in the misconception i hope we latch on to because of those molecular similarities that soy has to estrogen they are actually able to bind to the estrogen receptor sites on our cell membranes and block the undesirable estrogenic activity. So what people at one time for actually decades thought was something that could harm us and cause cancer, actually the properties in soy prevent cancer, which is consistent with again the common sense approach of looking at 
who consumes the most soy and what these, these countries that consume the most soy and what their cancer rates actually are. And, but in saying that, I don't want you just to take my word for it. I wouldn't expect you to just take my word for it. So what I want to do real quick here in closing is just share with you what the world leading health authorities are saying and the world leading scientists are saying about soy these days. Okay, so I've got some, some stuff here, some notes I took, and I want to read this to you. The first one is from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Okay, they say soy may, and I'm quoting this right off of their website, soy may benefit breast cancer survivors. The new research represents a complete turnaround from the previous understanding about the link between soy consumption and breast cancer. They went on to say, we've gone, quote, from saying no soy for breast cancer survivors to it's not going to hurt you to now it looks like it, it can, I'm sorry, now it looks like we can say it may help. Okay, now let's jump down here to the Journal of American Medical Association. This is the, the Doctors Association, essentially. Women with breast cancer, this is, quote, right off of their website from December of 2012. Women with breast cancer who eat more soy, non-genetically modified, are less likely to have a recurrence of cancer than those who do not or who eat less. Isn't that amazing? Um, look at this one from American Cancer Society, website July 2015. There is, quote, there is no evidence in the medical literature that soy protein is bad for humans compared to other forms of soy. Soy protein isolate is often used as a supplement in randomized studies of the effects of soy on health, and none of these studies have shown harm. It gets better. Here is uh, July 2015 from the website of Stanford School of Medicine. Quote, Soy is an excellent source of protein, which can possibly help bind to estrogen and may decrease the risk of hormonally related cancers, hormone related cancers, such as breast cancer and prostate, ca prostate cancer. Is that not amazing? Is that not the complete opposite of what some people would lead you to believe? And uh, so I hope this information has been helpful to you. Um, it's been very helpful to us. And I definitely, uh, we, Nicole and I, again, we, we want to help and we want to add value. I hope this is add value. I hope you found it, the information interesting and more importantly than that, informative and that it empowers you in your pursuit of long, you know, lifelong health, vitality, and well-being. Anyway, until next time, make it an amazing day. This is Alan Blaine. Talk to you soon.